Let's take a look at how to make this cool simple mushroom in Blender, add some tune shaders to it and then apply the details using grease pencil. Let's get to it. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're taking a look at creating this cool mushroom inside Blender with some tune shaders, some grease pencil details and just generally a little setup to create your own cartoon backgrounds for your animations in a very cool cell shaded style. So let's just jump right in. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your render settings and scene settings are set up properly for this kind of tune shader style. So inside the render settings tab, we'll be using EV render engine and under the color management tab, you just want to make sure your view transform is set to standard which gives us just a little bit more of a cartoony style as opposed to filmic. Uh, the only other setting that you need to worry about at the moment is making sure, of course, that you have your format done correctly. 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second is fine. And also that you have chosen where you're going to be outputting your files to. The rest of it we can worry about later. So let's just jump right in. So I'd like to base the colors and style of these mushrooms on this Minish Cap artwork here, one of my favorite Zelda games. So we're going to bring this in as a reference image first. The first thing to do, you believe it, is uh, delete the default key by pressing X and then delete. We are then going to hold Alt middle mouse button and flick to the right so we can get to front orthographic view. You can also click this icon up here instead. Then let's just press Shift A and then bring in a image reference. You need to do it from the angle that you want to bring it into because it will be aligned to that angle. So we will just choose our reference image and load that in. Let's just scale that up a little bit and we'll move it upwards so that the mushrooms base sits on the base uh, ground line. And we're going to go to our image options here and apply opacity and just drag the opacity of that down a little bit. And that's looking pretty good right there. So. Let's model this mushroom then. Uh, first thing we want to do is start with a circle. So I'm just going to line roughly the center of that mushroom up here, uh, like so. Then press Shift A, and we're going to add a mesh circle. Now, 32 vertices, uh, which is the default it comes in with, is a little bit much. So we're going to reduce that down to about 12. Uh, then apply that by clicking into the scene. Let's rename this Mushroom Stem, and let's scale it up until it's roughly the bottom size of our mushroom like so. That's looking pretty good. All right, so let's tab into edit mode. And if we come out of orthographic view, you can see the size of our circle at the moment. And we just want to start extruding this upwards. But first, let's press F to give it a face on the inside of this and then press extrude. And release just about a little bit further up. Let's go back to orthographic view and let's press S to scale it up. And essentially, we're just going to keep extruding and scaling with E and S until we get something that follows roughly the shape of this mushroom. That looks pretty nice. Let's just continue that upwards. And although we can't see it, obviously we're going to need a cap to our mushroom. So let's do that as well. Something like that. And of course there is already a face on the top because we added a face to the bottom of our mushroom. And let's alt click around the edge here and we'll press I to inset a little bit. And we'll just give that um, a loop around the edge so that our shape doesn't go weird when we start messing with it later on. Do the same to the top, alt click on the edge there and then I to inset and tab to go back to object mode. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's add uh, the mushroom cap as well. So once again, go back to orthographic view, shift A, mesh and a circle. Let's bring in a circle like that. It should already be on 12 vertices. So let's make this roughly the size of our mushroom cap and just G and Z to move that upwards there and then S to scale it over like so. That's looking pretty good. Let's tab into edit mode, make sure that we've given it a uh, face. And then we're going to move this down to the bottom of the cap like so. And it's important we give that face and I'll show you why in a minute. Let's press E and Z to move it upwards and then S to scale it. Let's actually have it come out a little bit. E again, scale it down and again. And don't worry too much about the fact that we've only got a few vertices at the moment. We should be good. Let's press I again to inset that there. Then underneath, we're going to alt click the edge of this loop, press I to insert that inwards. Then we are going to uh, do the same thing again, I inwards. Then we're going to press G and Z to move that up. Gives us just a little lip on the inside of our mushroom here. 
Let's do the same thing. E to extrude upwards. S to scale that down so it starts coming inwards. And then one more. We don't need a lot of detail on the inside. Something like that should be fine. Just double check that it doesn't intersect anywhere on the outside of your mushroom. And voila, we have our basic mushroom uh, shape rendered. So I'm just going to hide this empty in both the preview uh, and the render mode. And we'll just call this reference. Like so we'll rename this as well to mushroom cap. Okie dokie. Right, so that is our basic model. So let's take a look at adding some basic bumps and grooves and details to our mushroom shapes. Let's take the stem first of all. So I'm actually going to go up to here and just hide my mushroom cap in my preview. Um, and as you can see, it's not looking great at the moment. So let's right click that and choose shade smooth. And also let's go to our modifiers and choose add modifier subdivision surface. And we'll just put the viewport up to two so it matches the render. So as you can see, that's made our mushroom look a little bit more natural, but we need to add some details and modifications and sort of like creases and lumps and bumps to it to make it look a little bit more natural than this perfect sphere object we've got here. So I'm going to select my mushroom stem. I've just hidden my mushroom cap by just clicking this little eye up here uh, and I'm going to click tab to go into edit mode. Now uh, we're going to start adding some edge loops to this by pressing control R and then hovering over our object until we get one of these vertical yellow lines. I'm going to left click once and I'm going to move that yellow line closer to one of the existing ones. Then I'm going to do the same thing again between those two like this. And I'm going to right click to release it directly in the middle. OK, then I'm going to go to edge select and I'm going to alt click to hold everything on that um, loop. And then I'm going to shift click the um, top and the bottom loops like this. Actually, let's leave the bottom loop in. Let's then press numpad 7 to go to top view, or of course you can hold alt middle mouse button and flick downwards until you get it. Then I'm going to press G and move those inwards so we get a crease like so. Additionally, I'm then going to press control B to bevel that edge, and I'm just going to drag my mouse out until I get a slightly chunkier edge like that. Okay, now that's looking pretty good. We've now got a crease in our mushroom. And the most important thing is that we haven't actually affected this top face at all. There's still a face inside there. That's looking pretty nice. It doesn't matter for the stem, obviously, because um, you're not going to see the top of it. But when we get to the cap and do the same thing, you will see that. Uh, you can also do this sort of incrementally in height as well. So if we go press one to go back to um, vertex selection, control R as well. Let's add a second crease here. And then let's just go to uh, edge select with numpad two, sorry, with uh, just two, not numpad two. And then I'm going to just select some of these edges. Then let's uh, make sure I've got the bottom one. Uh, then let's go back to top view and press G again. And this crease, let's not bevel this one. Let's just leave it like that. So we can choose to bevel it later if we want to. Uh, that's created a crease that's now only halfway up the mushroom stem. So I'm going to go around my entire mushroom and I'm going to start adding in details like this and uh, in time lapse mode. And I'll see you on the other side of that. All right, that's looking pretty good now. That's seeming quite nice to me, very mushroomy, um, but it still looks a little bit too uniform. So we're going to apply some modifiers and deforms to it. Before we do that, however, we're going to use proportional editing to just affect the overall shape of it. I'm going to press seven, numpad seven to go to top view. And you can see we do have a little few creases here. Not important for the stem, but will be important for the cap later. So let's fix that. I'm going to edge loop with alt and clicking the uh, top of this mushroom and then just inset that face a little bit. And that's just going to solve those um, little weird creases that you get there. So let's go seven for top view. Let's press tab and one to go into vertex selection mode. Then I'm going to grab one of these edge vertex here, press G and we're going to move them around. But as you can see, we don't want to just grab one. We want to grab a few different ones and edit them proportionally. So pressing O on your keyboard or pressing this little icon up here will turn on proportional editing mode. Then when you press G, you get a circle around the point that you're moving and it will move everything proportionally within that point. So you can see we can actually stretch and deform this whole mushroom if we wanted to. But all I'm going to do is just take that original point and I'm just going to select random points around here and just pull them ever so slightly in different directions. Not too much. Don't want to go too crazy. And then of course you don't have to do this from top view. You can just do it to any view that you want and just go around your mushroom and start pulling in different directions until you get something that looks a little bit more natural there. That's looking quite nice now. Perfect. Let's add a little modifier to this so that it looks a little bit more bumpy lumpy. OK, so let's go over to our modifier section, choose add and then displace. OK, now this displace modifier is going to make it freak out entirely, but do not panic. 
we're going to click add new and we're going to call this uh, mushroom bump. Okay. And then down here with this display selected, go to your texture properties tab and convert it from image or movie to a Voronoi. And that's going to give us loads of lumpy bumps on our mushroom stem. Way too intense though. So down in the custom properties, sorry, in the colors properties, we're going to take that contrast all the way down. And that's basically taking this image here, anywhere that it's white in the image, it's raising our surface. Anywhere that it's black, it's leaving it alone. And then anywhere that's in between white or black in the gradient, it's going to proportionally raise that. So let's take this all the way down to say, oh, I don't know, 0.02. That's looking very nice and lumpy bumpy now. How about uh, 0.03? Let's push it a little bit further. Perfect. So now we have a pretty natural looking lumpy mushroom. Those steps that I just did, I'm now going to repeat for the mushroom cap. Um, so we will do this in fast forward because they are exactly the same steps. Uh, and I'll see you on the other side of that as well. One difference to the top of the mushroom before we carry on, I've done my creases here, but you're getting a bit of a hard shape on the top there. All you need to do to fix that is just to loop select the second top version of your uh, loop cut, press GG uh, for good game, and just move that down like so. And then I'll click the middle and inset that and move it up a little bit like so. Maybe as well, we can then add in another little loop cut here. And basically just add in a few more vertices just to round that out a little bit. And that's looking a bit nicer. Okay, now that we have done all of those meshes and uh, creases and things like that, you don't actually have to copy the modifiers manually. All you need to do is just select your mushroom cap, shift select your mushroom stem, right, uh, not right click, sorry, press control L and use to copy modifiers. And that's just going to copy the modifier across. You might want to um, edit the modifier for the mushroom to see if, um, if you don't like the effect of it, but I'm pretty happy with that. So that is, believe it or not, our, mo our mushroom completely modeled. Now it's time to move on to making the materials for it, adding the borders and all of the grease pencil details. So let's jump into that. Okay, great. So let's start working on our tune shaders. Before we do that though, we have a little bit of setup to do with our scene here. So let's first of all, create a plane, shift A, mesh and plane for the ground that we're gonna stick our mushroom on. And let's scale it up, absolutely loads. Then we're going to select everything in our scene. That's our mushroom, uh, stem, cap, and plane, and press Control A and apply all the transforms to that, which is just going to make sure that our scale is correct. Now, this may affect your modifiers on your stem. So if it does, just simply go back to your textures here, go down to your contrast, and just increase again until you're happy. I'm going to say this time about 0.04 seems good to me. Awesome. Now, let's take a look at what our camera is looking at. So we're going to press numpad zero to go inside our camera view. Then we're going to go to the view panel here and lock the camera to the view like this. And then when we scroll and move around, our camera will follow that. So I'm just going to point it directly at my mushroom. Mm, that side looks like a good side to me. Fantastic. Let's press zero to get out of there again. Let's just select our light and go down to our light properties here. And we want to turn off, believe it or not, shadows uh, for our point light. OK, great. Let's now go over to our shading menu, like so. Let's just stay in material mode for the viewport shading. Uh, and we're gonna add a new material to our object. So let's, with our mushroom stem selected, say, let's press plus new, and we're gonna rename this material mushroom stem. Now, the tune shader that we use is very, very simple. All we need to do is add two nodes. We're gonna press shift A in this panel and choose uh, shader to RGB and pop one of them in there and then shift A again. And we're going to choose color ramp. Okay. Now just disconnect your BSDF from your surface by grabbing this green noodle and just getting rid of it. That's going to make your mushroom black, but don't worry, that's fine. And then position your nodes so that your principled BSDF output goes into the shaders input. The shaders color output goes into the color ramps factor input and the color ramps um, color output goes into the surfaces of the medial material outputs input. It's going to look like we've not changed anything, um, but that's because at the moment, what it's doing is it's taking any dark areas on our object and applying the color black and any light oil areas on our object and applying the color white. If we were to change this from linear to constant and then slide this white slider back, you'll start to see where we're going with this. OK, so all we need to do is apply the colors that we'd like on our mushroom stem to the uh, color ramp here. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab my uh, 
colors that I got from my previous tests. So I have a number of purples and things like that here that I like. And I'm just going to copy and paste those into our color ramp by selecting the uh, slider that I want, clicking this box, going to hex and pasting them in. Now, of course, you can obviously choose your own colors or you can just copy the codes that I have here on my screen. It's completely up to you. But I'm just going to pop these four into the stem. And I think four shades is probably about right. And once you do that, you'll start to see where we're going with this whole idea. Boom. There we go. We now have four shades of purple and the distance between these sliders is actually important because it affects the distance between your materials, um, where it switches between the materials colors. So if I move these up, then you'll start to notice that the other shades start to creep in a little bit. Before you get too much of an accurate idea though, you do need to make sure that now you can switch to a rendered view, which then will apply your light to this object. Just for simplicity, I'm going to hide these other points here uh, for now so that we can see how it's affecting our stem by itself. And if I do move this light around, you'll notice that the light changes on our object too, which is beautiful. OK, so um, let's select our object again. And now if we start playing with all these, you'll start to see how our objects creep up in how much light they absorb. And I think that's probably looking about good for me. Perfect. Let's turn back on my mushroom cap and then I'm going to go to the mushroom cap and we're going to apply the same material to it like so. That's looking pretty good. Uh, however, we're then going to click this little duplicate button, which is new material based on existing. And we're going to call this one mushroom cap. OK, then I'm going to take the pink colors and uh, apply that to that. So obviously I'll just fast forward through this bit for you because I'm literally just copying and pasting colors. OK, that's looking pretty good. Finally, let's do the same thing again for the ground. Let's turn the plane on. We'll select our plane. We'll select mushroom cap. We'll press this duplicate button and we'll call this, I don't know, cave floor. And I have some nice dark browns that I'm going to apply to this same shader here. And again, I'll just fast forward through that. OK, that's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and add the same modifier to the floor as we did to the um, mushrooms. So we're going to go to the displace modifier. OK, we're going to create a new uh, texture. We'll call this one cave floor bump. Uh, and we'll do the same thing. We'll go down to this tab here and choose Voronoi and we will bring down the contrast of that Voronoi a little bit and bring up the size as well. Now, obviously, at the moment we're not seeing much because we need to tap inside our plane and subdivide it. So we're going to press Control R and scroll up a bunch of times until we get a load of surfaces. Right click to release, do the same thing again. Scroll up until we get a bunch of surfaces, right click to release like that. Then when we go back, we're going to start seeing some of those bumps in there, which is lovely. So let's go and increase that contrast a touch um, and put the scale back to where it was before. OK, that's pretty good. Now, of course, if you wanted to as well, you could tab into your edit mode here, select a point, press uh, O and then G to um, do your proportional editing mode and then just pull around a few of these points to create a little bit of natural variation in your cave floor. Like so, just to add a bit more to that. OK, that's looking pretty good now. Um, the only other thing to do now is to um, add some borders to these mushrooms with a emission shader. So we get a nice thick chunky border and everything. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select, say, my mushroom cap, for example, and we're going to go to our materials panel here. We're then going to add a second slot for a material. We're going to create a new material and we're just going to call this mushroom border. OK, now we don't want a principled BSDF for this, so we're just going to delete that. We're instead going to press shift A and add in a emission node and then we're going to connect the emission nodes output to the surface input of the material and we're going to take the color from this we're just going to take the darkest purple that we used on say the mushroom stem paste that in there and then we'll just darken it up a little bit more so we've got a uh, well, not quite black essentially a very very dark purple okay awesome hasn't done anything right that's because we want to apply this to a solidify modifier on the outside of our mushroom cap so go to our modify panel here Click Add Modifier and we're going to choose Solidify. Then we're going to go down to our um, Materials section of the Solidify and we're going to offset the material by one, which basically takes the second material slot from the materials that we've applied to it. OK, now to get this to actually show up, 
we need to increase the thickness on our object, okay? But at the moment, you'll notice it's not really doing what we want. That's because we need to go down to normals and click flip, and that's going to apply the uh, to the outside, essentially. Then back in our materials panel here, we need to go to our settings and choose back face culling, and that's going to apply it basically to, it's going to take your actual object and subtract that from the color of this material so that it only applies it to the back face. Then back in your modify panel, you can of course adjust the thickness until you get something you want. And this is why it's important that the scale of your object is applied, okay? Because otherwise this thickness will change. Additionally, you can see that some of these edges here do get the big purple lump when you turn it around and some of them not so much like this thinner one. If you go into your material, into your object and just go tabbing into edit mode, and then you alt click one of the loops that you um, brought back into the mushroom, you can bevel that loop a little bit up and you will get a hard line. So if you want to make sure that some of these shapes have hard lines that currently don't, you can bevel with control B and then just dragging until you get a line that you're happy with. Okay, maybe something like that looks pretty good to me. Awesome. Don't worry too much about this though, because of course we will be coming through and um, adding all of our grease pencil details to this later on. So it's only if you want these nice big chunky lines all over your mushroom. Uh, awesome. Let's get back into object mode. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to now um, click my mushroom stem, shift click my mushroom cap, and then control L. And we're going to uh, copy the modifiers, and that's going to pop that solidify modifier over there as well with all of the same settings selected, which is good. Then we just go down to a materials panel, add a new material slot and choose mushroom border from it. And we get the mushroom border on the stem of our mushroom as well. Awesome. Cool. That's looking pretty good. Um, now it's time to just play with our scene, get lighting that we are happy with, you know, add in a few lights, move the lights around It's up to you. Uh, and then once you do, we'll start looking at the grease pencil objects. All right, so let's quickly do a little bit of scene setting here. Uh, I'm just gonna give my mushroom a little bit of a wall. We're gonna go into our plane and we're just going to grab some of these um, vertices over here and we're just gonna move them upwards. Let's rotate them on the uh, Y axis like so. That seems about right. And then let's just move them up like that. Uh, that does give us a bit of a dip below our objects though. So we'll just press all of these and we'll do scale Z to bring them down like that. That seems about right to me. I do want a little bit of a dip below my mushroom uh, as the light dips away. So let's just bring that in like so and rotate that on the Y axis. And we've just basically now got a little bit of a wall next to our mushroom there. That's looking quite nice. Awesome. Okay, so we now have a wall behind our mushroom. Let's add in a spotlight. Shift A and go to um, light, spot, and then press G and Z to bring that upwards like so. Now it's a pretty um, small, low powered light at the moment. So we'll go down to our light options here and let's just increase that to say like 500. Uh, that's not nearly enough, so let's do 4,000. That's looking a bit better, very nice. Uh, we want to turn off cast shadow, obviously, and that's now gonna just start affecting the top of our mushroom here. So let's just bring that down until we don't lose all of our um, colors. So say like 3000 there, seems pretty nice to me. Then we'll just go to top view and we'll move this guy away a little bit. And let's try playing with the radius to see how that affects our light. So let's increase the radius, but then bring him closer. And what that should get us is smoother transitions between our object's lights. Let's try bumping him up to say like 1000 and then increasing the radius even more. Yeah, so the, the more you do that, the, the smoother the, the gaps between your lights. So let's do that. Let's bring him up a bit. Or should we have him, should we have him be like low down so that he's affecting the stem? I think that's nice. Uh, and then we'll bring that in like so. So just continue tweaking that until you get something that you are happy with, okay? Uh, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of um, uh, detail to our mushroom now with grease pencil. So let's jump into that section. All right, so we'll be using Grease Pencil to add some uh, spots and details to our mushroom. Now, I will be using my graphics tablet to do this, but don't worry, you can absolutely follow along with a mouse. So to get this started, then let's select our mushroom cap here, and we're going to create a new um, Grease Pencil object. So let's shift and right click the center of our mushroom cap, just like that, just so that when we press then Shift A and add in a new Grease Pencil blank, 
it starts at the top of there. It doesn't actually matter the location, but it just needs to make sense to you. Okay, let's call this again. Let's rename this mushroom spots. Okay, and we're going to need to uh, draw on the surface of this object using the grease pencil pen. So with the grease pencil selected, we'll rename this first layer in our grease pencil panel here. We'll just call that spots. And we need to make a new material for the grease pencil. Now these are unique to grease pencil materials. You can see here we have a material called black um, that doesn't correlate to any of the materials we've created already. We're actually going to delete that because we don't need it. And we're going to click plus new and we're going to just call this one spots. Now you can have strokes and fills on your materials for your grease pencils. We're just going to need a fill for this one and that fill needs to be just white. Okay, now a few settings that you should um, click on here are to go to your grease pencil layers and on the spots layer, uncheck use lights. Okay, and that's just going to obviously stop the lights affecting the color of our grease pencil in the scene. Now press control and tab or go up to your object mode menu up here and choose draw mode. Okay, and inside draw mode, you're going to get some controls for your grease pencil. We're going to turn the strength all the way up. And we're also going to go into advanced and turn up active smoothness as well, especially if you're using a mouse. Uh, and the most important thing is to check this drop down box and change it to surface. So you're drawing on the surface of your objects and reduce the offset to zero. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. First of all, if you leave on origin, it's going to draw at the origin point and angle of your grease pencil object, which means that it's going to be the wrong angle wherever you draw essentially. So you'll draw here and then it will be a different angle, basically the angle of what you're looking at. We don't want that. What we want to draw is not on uh, the position of the 3D cursor, but on the surface of our object. However, if I leave that offset too high, you'll notice that when I start drawing, it will look correct until we move the camera and you'll see that we've drawn our spot really too far away from our mushroom. So we just need to make sure that that surface offset is set to zero. And that is dependent on how far you're zoomed in as well. So zero is really the only acceptable option if you want to draw directly on the surface of something. Then simply, Go around and add some spots to your mushroom. All right, that's looking pretty good. So you can see here that I've just now added a bunch of spots using grease pencil to the top of our mushroom. Now let's add a little bit more detail to the uh, sort of stroke outside of the mushroom as well. So let's add a new layer on top of our spots layer and we will call this one uh, just details, okay? Then we're going to need a new material just for this layer as well. So we're going to go down to our material panel here and press new and we'll call this one uh, details again. For this one, we do want a solid and not a fill, uh, sorry, a stroke, not a fill. So I'm going to select the base color of my stroke and I'm going to choose the base color of this outline here. That's looking pretty good. And then back on our details layer, we'll uncheck use lights. Okay. Now, um, if you don't have a pressure sensitive brush, you're not going to get these um, pressure options. But if you do, you need to make sure that your um, opacity or your, your strength is uh, unchecked for pressure strength. But the radius of your brush um, has pressure sensitivity so that as you press lightly, it goes thin. And as you press heavily, it goes thick. If you don't have that, don't worry. Um, just reduce the radius of your brush and draw in a couple of strokes as opposed to um, a pressure sensitive stroke. Then we're just going to go around the edges of our mushroom and it's important that you're doing it face on. Let me show you. If I try to draw as if this was the surface of our mushroom, that might look good from one angle. And then when you turn, you realize you've got this wobbly line that doesn't quite work. Okay. So the best way I found to do this is just to treat your mushroom as if it's a flat object and just draw directly down some details and rotate. And as you see, then it follows the line of your mushroom like this. So we'll just add in a few more as we go around. And I'm just doing this on the edges of the cap, but of course there's nothing stopping me if I wanted to, adding more details on the stem as well. So I'll just quickly go through and add a few details here just to show you what I mean. It doesn't look too great if I overlap any of these um, spots, to be honest, thinking about it. So I'm not going to do that because these are supposed to be creases in the mushrooms. So you do have to think a little bit still. Um, you can't just blindly go in uh, like a nutter. And if there's any points where you've made a gap in the mushroom and it hasn't applied that line to it where you want it, this is the point where you can just draw that in as opposed to using the bevel technique from earlier. So as you can see, a very versatile technique here for um, working with grease pencil. Such a great addition to Blender. I really love it. 
Um, in fact, it's what made me choose to start thinking about Blender as my animation software, if I'm honest. Okay, great. That's starting to look really nice on the top. So let's go down to our stem as well. For the moment, I'm just going to hide our floor so that I don't keep glitching through it. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to start adding some details to the stem too. So let's come in down here. And as you can see, it's now applied it to the surface of the stem of the mushroom. That's looking real nice. And the good thing about these as well is that um, because the lights won't affect them, they'll remain the same color. <clears throat> Excuse me, which uh, is great because that looks makes them look exactly like the borders that we created with the solidify modifier. Um, so you really do get that awesome cartoony effect. OK, that's looking pretty good. But one thing I know about mushrooms is that the inside of the cap is often not the same color as the outside of the cap. So that's the last thing we need to fix before we start looking at finalizing our scene. So just finish adding in a few of these details here with the grease pencil, and then we'll sort that object out. That looks pretty good to me. We'll leave it there. Of course, you can take as long as you want to do all those details. It's not a problem. Awesome. That's looking real nice. All right, let's sort look at sorting the inside of our mushroom. OK, this should be simple enough. Let's press Control Tab to go back to our uh, object mode. Uh, there it is. Awesome. And as you see now, our grease pencil object is actually its own thing that we can move about uh, as of itself. So what I want to do is add an um, inside texture to just a part of this single mesh on our mushroom here. OK, so that's what we're going to do now. Uh, to make things easier for myself, I am going to hide my mushroom stem and my um, grease pencil objects, which we did call uh, mushroom spots. There we go. Sorry, my microphone is right in the way of my layers palette. Uh, awesome. So let's actually as well, um, let's create new, the new material first. So we're going to go down to our materials panel here. OK, and we're going to go to mushroom cap and we're just going to duplicate that. And we're going to call this mushroom inner cap. OK, and once again, for this, I just have a series of colors that I'm already working with. I think it's just three on this one. So I'm going to remove a couple of these points. Let's just to pick those by random. And I'm just going to same way as I did in the shading panel. But this is just in like a quick preview mode. We're going to copy and paste those hex codes. Now, this will be changing the color of your cap. But don't worry, that's not an issue. Um, we have duplicated the material, so that doesn't matter. And three like that. That looks pretty good. Let's make it so that the light colors come in way more early than the dark colors, giving us a bit more details like so. Awesome. Now we have our mushroom in a cap. We're actually going to turn it back to mushroom cap for the outside. Then press tab. OK, and we're going to go to the inside of our mushroom here. Let's go to object. Um, sorry, um, uh, I don't even know what this is called anymore. Um, solid, solid viewport mode, <laughs> solid view. Uh, and for the moment as well, we're just going to turn off uh, the viewport view of all of our modifiers. So that we're left with the original mesh here, which, as you can see, is a bit of a mess, actually. But um, that's not an issue. Let's press three so we can go to face selection mode. And I'm going to press W until I get up to this kind of looping selection here. And I'm just going to select everything on the inside of my mushroom cap mesh. So let's go down to our materials panel. OK, uh, we will add in a new material slot on the bottom from which we will choose mushroom in a cap. And then we can just click this assign button. And if you go to your preview mode, you'll see that that has now been assigned. However, it's looking a bit bright because of the lighting in our scene. So let's tab back to object mode to see what it actually looks like and just play around with these sliders until we get more darkness in there. OK, I don't really want a lot of highlights. That's looking pretty good to me. All right, that's looking a little bit nicer. Now we have finished that by selecting all of the faces and making them brown. Perfect. Let's turn back on all of our other objects and take a look at our scene. Now that's looking pretty good, but I think I want to move the mushroom up a little bit. I'm just going to select my mushroom cap and the spots um, and the stem. And I'm just going to move everything up just a touch like so. That's looking pretty good now, just so it's a little bit further out of the ground. Awesome. Now let's add a touch of camera movement. Uh, and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to duplicate. Sorry, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to select all of my uh, mushroom assets, control P and then object keep transform. That's going to parent them all together. Now I'm going to duplicate my mushroom. Let's press shift D and uh, move over here. Let's scale it down. And remember, you'll, you'll, as you scale, um, if you don't apply your scale like so with control A and apply scale, 
then the thickness of your mushroom line is going to change with the mushroom. You know, if we scale that up, we press Control A, scale again, then it's going to apply that thickness again. So just make sure you're doing that each time you change your mushroom around. Okay, let's pop this mushroom like that. Oh, maybe we can actually have it be tucked underneath the other mushroom a little bit. Let's scale just the Z, make him a bit of a flatter mushroom like that. And then let's scale the X, make him a little bit less cylindrical as well. That's looking pretty good there. Awesome. And look at him through the camera just to see uh, what that looks like. Something like that. And then let's move the camera to the middle of you. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, so the next object then, the next idea is just do a little bit of camera animation and we're just going to have it pan around our mushrooms a little bit and then we'll be done with this scene. Okay, great. So a bit of simple camera animation. You'll see, however, if we were just to keyframe the rotation of our camera, it wouldn't actually rotate around the mushroom. So what we're going to do is, uh, well, make it rotate around the mushroom. Uh, let's come out of our camera view by pressing numpad zero. And then let's shift right click this piece of ground in between the two mushrooms that we want the focal point to be. Then shift A and choose new empty plane axis. And we'll rename this uh, camera focus, okay? Uh, now we would like to take our camera focus and shift click the camera and then press control P, object keep transforms. And that will basically make the uh, camera parented to our camera focus. So if we were to rotate, for example, our camera focus, the camera would rotate with that. So it's basically just like a focal point. So what we're gonna do is take our camera focus, let's rotate that in the Z axis. So it's about here, just so we don't see the edge of our plane. Let's then press I, uh, rotation to keyframe the rotation. And over here, say frame 120, we'll rotate it to the other angle like so. I, rotation. Let's then also just keyframe this light as well, just for the hell of it. Let's go over to frame one, we'll press I on location. And on frame 20, we will just, uh, let's come out of camera view, go to top view. Let's move that light over here a little bit. And then I, location. But uh, let's trim down our scene to 120 frames like that. So we're only working with the frames that we want. And then just press play and numpad zero to see your animation. Beautiful. As you can see, the light affects the mushrooms. The um, camera movement works really well. And all of the shapes that you did in your grease pencil are attached to the objects. All right, so there's one last thing to do before we render. If I render an image now as an example, you'll notice that in our render window, we have all of a sudden far too many spots and far too many lines for our um, animation. And that's because you're actually seeing through all of the grease pencil objects to the full uh, space around your mushroom. It's a very simple fix. All we need to do essentially is add a Z pass to our render. So we're gonna go down here to your view layer properties and underneath the passes section, just turn on Z pass. And then when you do your render image, you'll notice that this time you've only got the uh, planes that are facing the camera at the time. Okay, so awesome. Let's take a look and let's render our animation and we'll come out on the other side. Beautiful. All right, so there you have it. That is our cartoon toon shaded grease pencil combo tutorial in Blender. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this one. Let me know if you want more Blender tutorials um, because I'm happy to do them. And hopefully I'll see you again on TipTut for another perhaps Blender tutorial. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy the next one and I'll see you next time on TipTut. Beautiful. Just look at these beautiful people. Aren't they great? They support me every single month by becoming a member of the TipTut zone by clicking the join button below. And you could too, but it'd be beautiful either way. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.